What do you get when you combine Dario Argento and David Cronenberg? One of the craziest Japanese slasher films ever. Duh. Welcome to Sick Flicks, where I take a deep dive into the cinematic sewer to help you embrace your inner gore geek. I'm Mike Bracken, aka The Horror Geek, and today we're tackling Toshiharu Ikeda's weird Japanese slasher flick, Evil Dead Trap. Released in 1988, Evil Dead Trap pays homage to Italian splatter cinema, but still manages to feel original thanks to a wild last act that comes completely out of left field. Ikeda has crafted something genuinely unique with this one, a slasher flick that blends a bunch of disparate influences into a new concoction that feels surprisingly original. It's got the requisite hapless victims, weird characters, an isolated locale, and plenty of kills. But is Evil Dead Trap splattery? Let's get to the gore and find out. Oh, and before we get started, today's video is brought to you by patrons Matthew Mancini, Tony Teolas, sorry if I butchered that Tony, and Chandler Ingram. If you'd like to sponsor our video, you'll find a link to my Patreon in the pinned comment in description below. And now that we've got that taken care of, let's get bloody. We fade in on this screen. Joy Pack Film? Really? This feels like the equivalent of Pixar Presents Martyrs. Only to be fair, I'd watch Pixar's Martyrs. And Title Card. Evil Dead Trap? Man, I love movies with Bruce Campbell in them. I also love this goblin-esque theme music. <laughs> Evil Dead Trap has a lot more in common with the work of Dario Argento than Sam Raimi. Then we jump into this episode of Late Night with Nami. I'll be honest, I only watch it because it's on right before Videodrome. Anyway, turns out her show is basically the first YouTube reaction channel and she's not pleased with your recent submissions. And less than two minutes in and we've already got mommy issues. I appreciate that Toshiharu Ikeda isn't messing around. Back in another movie, Nami's using a vending machine. This is Japan, so she's probably just shopping for used underwear. That's how vending machines work in Japan, right? And after a break, Nami finds this strange package on her desk. No, oh, it's just flower of flesh and blood. I already reviewed that one. Wait, I've seen this before. These are the cut early scenes from Tumbling Doll of Flesh. She's like, boring. Can we get to the sex and torture already? Turns out the answer is yes. This woman's about to have an eye-opening experience. The kind that would have made Lucio Fulci proud. I can't show you that because Prudetube would shit a brick, but take my word for it. It's like a dolly film. Anyway, this lady says what we're all thinking. <laughs> and then this happens. <laughs> Creepy. So, what's the first thing you'd do if you saw yourself in a gruesome murder tape? If you guessed head out to the scene to investigate, give yourself a screenwriter's credit. Wait a minute, is this the Japanese version of a robicide? Then they set about planning their live location shoot. Oh, don't worry. If that happens, you just post it on YouTube. Worked for Logan Paul, so I'm sure it'll be fine. Then Nami's asking the important questions. Of course he does. He's on this channel, isn't he? See? Yeah, like the time I watched that video with you guys and we all died seven days later. <laughs> no thanks. And they're off. It was nice of the killer to videotape a map for them. This was how we got around before Waze. After hours of driving, they wind up here. I bet they run into the jewel thieves from junk in this place. Well, shit, the gate's locked. Guess we better head back. Movie's over, guys. Thanks for coming. Oh, wait, that was easier than I thought it would be. It's like she's Jill Valentine with those unlocking skills. And now, inside the abandoned spooky factory where someone filmed a murder, they make the always wise decision to split up. <laughs> These people probably deserve whatever horrible fate they have coming. But hey, at least splitting up gives Kondo a chance to talk about his recurring case of whiskey dick. Come on, honey, it happens to all men. Nami, meanwhile, is going it alone. At least until she finds this dude. He kinda looks like Team Ninja boss Tomonobu Itagaki before he grew out his hair. Hey, come here often? Turns out he's got some helpful advice. Kills get oil. From there, we head back to see Ray, who's walking right into this jump scare. Then the snake starts nosing its way up her skirt. 
Hell yeah. No, not like that, you pervs. I mean this real snake, not Kondo's snake. Then she wanders into another jump scare. I hope we're not gonna start abusing the jump scares. Kondo's feeling frisky. Ray's like, I said no to skirt snake, but I guess trouser snake is okay. Then we get this weird evil dead cam. Maybe that's where the title comes from. Fun fact, the actress who plays Rei was actually supposed to play Nami. She was a popular AV star in Japan and they wanted to promote her in this mainstream role. Unfortunately, Ikeda didn't think she was a strong enough actress to pull off the part. Later on, Rie bumps into Nami and they have this exchange. <laughs> Understatement of a lifetime. And to prove it, here's our killer and some random dude right behind them. I like that the killer gives us the Batman slash Spawn slash Dracula cape flip as he makes his exit. Back inside, Ray's on the move again, but she forgot her umbrella and it's raining maggots. This is pretty clearly a nod to Suspiria. If she finds a blue iris, she's dead meat. And I don't mean James A. Janice. This is the least of her worries though. First she finds this corpse. Then she gets impaled on these spikes. Someone's really making some points here. I had no idea the Japanese were into acupuncture too. The good news is she got one last good poke before she died. Better than the one Kondo gave her anyway. Back outside we get some exposition. Why does this look like a Japanese Summer's Eve commercial? Then they walk right into this jump scare. Oh, come on. There would be at least 16 YouTubers filming fake ghost videos there at this point. With the gang all back together, they head back inside where they find the set of MTV's remote control. Do you kids even remember MTV's remote control? Christ, I'm old. They keep exploring and Ray pops in for a visit. Guys, I've been hanging out here waiting for you all day. Rie makes a break for it, but the building's like no way and starts collapsing. Yeah! Clearly this place is not built to OSHA standards. Man, it's really like a John Cougar Mellencamp song up in here. Rie makes it out, but everyone else stays inside. And clearly whoever's on the other side of these bars doesn't like having his picture taken. In fact, you could call this slash photography. They flee and Nami and Kondo fall right into this pit. It's all pretty much downhole from here. They're in a whole new world now. Outside, Rie is starting the car. Stop, stop, you're gonna flood it. Too bad she made the horror film rookie mistake and forgot to check the back seat. That weird dude with the ball gag from earlier is back there. He then demonstrates why he flunked out of massage therapy school. I don't think this is proper Swedish neck massage technique. Jokes on you, lady. Back inside, Mako's barricaded herself in this room. Too bad for her, this was the killer's master plan all along. Now the killer is flashing her. Hell yeah. No, not like that, you pervs. I meant with the camera flash. Then he slices her hand. Oh, he just wants to be Blood Brothers. That's sweet. And after all that gore, we transition to this Bob Ross painting. Look at those happy little trees. Back in the van, Rie is still getting tortured. <laughs> Unfortunately, things are gonna get worse. Rie gets lassoed like this is the rodeo. <laughs> is this that Ted Lasso show you guys won't shut up about? I'm not digging it. From there, we head back to check in on Nami and Kondo. They're still in that hole. Man, this place is the pits. Wait, now she's on the roof? How did she get on a roof? Also, I think that smoke means they've selected a new pope. Anyway, she's looking around for her friends, but only finds this jump scare. Oh, hey, it's the weird guy from earlier. I'm sure this isn't suspicious at all. I don't know about you guys, but I totally expect the Bobby Rhodes and a horde of yellow-eyed demons are gonna come out from behind that container at any second. Then we settle in for some exposition. <laughs> Oh, 
I knew it. This is where junk took place. And here comes some more exposition, which will be important later when we get to this film's batshit insane third act. Weird guy heads off to shoot at something, and Nami takes this opportunity to bounce. No lie, this is basically how I sneak out of every social function I'm invited to. I'm like a ghost. Except, with freedom right in front of her, she gets stopped one last time. Mako has left her a video message. This is sort of like FaceTime for 80s kids. If you're thinking this might have inspired Saw, well, you're probably right. Determined to save her friend, Nami heads off. But in the immortal words of Admiral Akbar, it's a trap. Or maybe it's an evil dead trap. Oblivious to the danger like she's a Japanese Mr. Magoo, Nami barges in, triggering the trap. <laughs> Luckily, the arrow misses. <laughs> Phew, disaster averted. <laughs> or not. Nice work, Nami. Now she looks like Urkel. Did I do that? Man, my Urkel sucks. Then the killer starts shooting fireworks at her like this is Sauna Team. Look, maybe three of you will get that reference. It was mostly just for me. And he's not done. He's basically trying to turn her into a Skyrim meme at this point. This could be a rebolting experience for her if any of those hit the mark. But wait, how's he shooting those arrows? He has no crossbow. She starts talking some trash, then he does turn her into a Skyrim meme with this arrow to the knee. I'll be damned. This is definitive proof that Evil Dead Trap is one of Skyrim's influences. Book it. Before the killer can finish her off, Creepy Guy shows up. Look, you're not fooling anyone, movie. He's the killer. He's gonna help her escape and share some exposition. Then he's gonna show her the way out, but she has to hold his zippo. You know what the difference between a hippo and a zippo is? A hippo weighs hundreds of pounds, but a zippo is a little lighter. And that, my friends, is why I'm the king of dad jokes on this platform. After some more jibber jabber, they're walking through this tunnel. It's sort of boring, if you catch my drift. Eventually, Weird Guy heads back inside, and I guess Ikeda couldn't get any J&B in Japan, so this wild turkey will have to do. Nami then discovers Rie is dead, and now she's ready to assume the mantle of final girl. Huzzah. And just in time, because here comes the killer. Well, he's preoccupied, she's ready to make her escape, but there's still like 30 minutes left in this movie, so she's gonna head back inside instead. I mean, what could go wrong? Well, for starters, this. Who the hell is this woman talking? After some more exploring, she finds this room. Oh, it's just this Twitch studio. This is what we had to do to have a three monitor setup back in the day. Sure hope those TVs aren't Emerson's, this place is already dangerous enough. And don't look now, but someone's been working on a Hellraiser cosplay. Pinhead looked really weird before he went full Cenobite. Then Nami figures out what we already knew. Yeah, he thinks you're his morn. Wait, that's supposed to be mom. In the next room, the killer is struggling to move Rie, so she lends him a hand. And that's some pretty solid life advice. And then we get Evil Dead Trap's big twist. Weird creepy guy isn't the lone killer. Hideki isn't a split personality, he's real. Nami's ready to take him to the cops, but that idea bombs. What? Don't act like I've never done bomb jokes, C4. Nami eventually blasts Creepy Guy and then things get really weird. It's like he ate some of those alien eggs from contamination. Until now, Evil Dead Trap has felt like an homage to Italian horror, particularly Dario Argento. Now we're about to pay respects to the work of David Cronenberg. Dude spent his whole life carrying this tumor around. Obviously, it really grew on him. <laughs> this is literally the stupidest channel on YouTube. And say hello to Hideki. Creepy guy wants to talk, but Hideki's like, sorry, slime's a wasting. And yeah, he's a mutant psychic baby. Told you this shit was gonna get weird. 
Nami's clearly played a lot of video games. She knows shooting canisters always causes an explosion. <laughs> then things get weirder as Hideki wraps this tentacle around her neck. Is this live action La Blue Girl? I don't think I'm allowed to cover Japanese tentacle movies on PrudeTube. And say what you will, but that Hideki really has some intestinal fortitude. At any rate, this gutsy performance is interrupted when Creepy Guy stabs Hideki and himself. I hate to cut and run, but you know. And in a really handy turn of events, he even comes with a self cremate setting. That's useful. Well, he's dead, so that looks like a wrap, right? Of course it's not a wrap. We've got another jump scare. They square off and creepy guys like, try the pimp hand, it's delicious. Nami's like, sorry, I think it's burnt. Then she stabs him with a shard and he goes out the window, which is good because he was becoming a real pain in the glass. Well, at least I think he went out the window or maybe someone just dumped their charcoal grill out here. The good news is they can just draw the chalk outline using charred pieces of his corpse. Afterwards, Nami winds up in the hospital where they're giving her JMB straight through her IV. And now this guy's doing the old Friday the 13th ending. Sorry, we never found that monster you keep babbling about. Now, please freshen up my drink with your ashes. After that, life goes back to normal, except Nami gets this strange package. Oh god, it's Bunny Lebowski's toe, isn't it? Oh no, it's just the Zippo, which is a nice gift because we know Nami smokes from the last scene. This causes her to spaz out and here comes Hideki like a xenomorphin alien. Man, that's a face not even a dead mother could love. And wait, that's the end? When does Ash and his chainsaw show up? I feel so ripped off. Overall, Evil Dead Trap is a film that feels both overly familiar and distinctly unique. It pays homage to Italian and Cronenbergian horror, but it mixes it all into its own weirdly original concoction. Unearthed Film's new Blu-ray version of the movie should help a whole new generation of Japanese horror fans find this somewhat forgotten cult classic. And that's a good thing as far as I'm concerned. But enough about that. Is Evil Dead Trap splattery? Let's go to the gore card. In terms of gross anatomy, Evil Dead Trap delivers. We're treated to an impaling, a beheading, a cleaver to the dome, a cut throat, and Hideki's chest burst scene. Those are just the highlights. FX supervisor Shinichi Wakasa's work is impressive. Impressive enough that he eventually got to work on Godzilla. And because of that, Evil Dead Trap earns an impressive 4 barf bag rating. This is definitely a sick flick. Looking for another horror movie with a crazy ending? Then be sure to check out my review of A Blade in the Dark. You'll find a link here on the screen during my outtakes. I'll meet you over there. Until next time, I'm Mike Bracken, aka The Horror Geek, bringing you all the splatter that matters. I'm Mike Bracken, aka The Horror Geek, and today we're tackling Toshiaru Ikeda's. Oh, I knew that name was gonna give me fits. I'm Mike Bracken, aka The Horror Geek, and today we're tackling Toshiharu Ikeda's weird. Oh, come on, Tongue. You can say this. I have faith in you. Ikeda has crafted something. We're to the second paragraph, and I'm already on like take seven. A slasher flick that blends a bunch of disparate influences into a new concoction. Concoction? Kind of looks like Team Ninja boss Tomonobu Itagaki before he grew out his hair. <laughs> what was I thinking with all these Japanese names? Oh my god, I should have just called everyone this person, that person. Spawn slash Dracula cave, cape, cave flip. What the fuck is a cave flip? Let's get to the gore and find out. Oh fuck, that's the wrong line.